Hello wonderful people. How are you? How are you doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching us from. This is the Wiser Woman Forum. I am so excited to be coming to you for the next few minutes as we continue to seek the wisdom that comes from the word of God. Karibu, invite a friend, take the next few minutes, have a seat and let's get into the wisdom that comes from the word of God. Today, I'll be talking about farming. Yes, we are farmers. Sa kama we ni ule mse unasemanga kufarm ni ushamba, basi leo sisi wote tutakuwa tu washamba. Kwa sababu whether we like it or not, we are all farmers. It doesn't have to necessarily be a physical garden. We are all farmers. I have news for you. Our father who is in heaven is a farmer. The devil himself is a farmer. And you and I are also farmers. What shall we be talking about? Seed time seed time we'll go direct into the word because i want us to start from the word itself and it shall be coming from the book of genesis chapter 8 verse 22 from the nkgv version well the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat winter and summer and day and night shall not cease this was a scripture that is preceded by the destruction of the first earth as we would say this was after the flood and after the lord had decided yes the inclination of the human heart is towards doing all that is wicked all that is evil but i as your god i will no longer destroy the earth but one thing i will say is that as long as the earth remains that seed time and harvest shall never cease. Now, this is a principle that no matter who you are, no matter who are, whatever wisdom you may have from the world, from whatever it is, kama umesoma encyclopedia zote, all dictionaries, if you have consumed as numerous a books as you can, it does not negate this principle that seed time and harvest will never cease. And God himself follows these protocols when he's dealing with anything that concerns the universe as we know it. If you did not know, the universe itself was created from a source. Everything that you see originates from something the scientists will refer to as a dust. Dust. That just that tiny, tiny, tiny speck Sometimes you may have to put it under a microscope to be able to see it. Was the culmination of all that you see today. The sun itself, the universe itself, everything originates from the dust. When you think of seed and you think of time, it is easy to look at your watch and think that's what I'm talking about. But I would like for you to open your eyes to deeper understanding and to try for a second. We may not be able to comprehend our God, but to try and see from what he's written in his word, to try and view how he views seed and time. One of the things I love about that scripture, it says, for as long as the earth shall remain. That tells me that a day is coming when the earth shall be no more. So if you're those people who are saying that I believe in science, I don't believe in all this Jesus stuff. I have news for you. Even scientists themselves, they back it up that this earth cannot remain forever. They do tell us that a day will come and the greatest likelihood, according to scientists, is that the world will explode into flames from the results of the sun giving out. That even the sun itself has a clock on it. Everything bows to the time of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? We've been talking about purpose. And I've been saying that it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how late you feel you've been. It doesn't matter where you, you, you came from. That as long as you started following on this series of discussing how on purpose God created us for his purpose, that you shall come to understand that there is still time for you to redeem your time. But the time has come. Every student must graduate. The days of saying that you are no longer out of time are over. I'm talking to a people who now have an understanding of who they are and who God made them to be. Now, this is the class where I now get to tell you that the clock is actually ticking. So what do I mean by that? You see, Every time we talk of farmers, I like to talk about farming. I don't know, for some reason, it did not fascinate me until I started noticing that Jesus himself would use farming so many times. Even God, as his word is being written, he will refer to farming in so many ways. I never quite understood why. So many, many episodes ago, we talked about purpose being in seed form. That 
in us when we came into this world, God deposited in us a seed of greatness. And that is why none of us can look to the maker and say, I have no purpose. That would be so to say that God made a mistake. And we know that God is not a liar. He is not a man that he may lie. And he is not a son of man that he may repent. He, he basically, it is just another way of saying that God is God. He is not you and me. He is not flesh and blood. So if he says that there is a purpose for your life, just because you don't know, it doesn't mean that it's absent. But here is the thing that all of us have to function within that time. In the next episode, we shall zero in on time. But in today's episode, we shall look at the seed. The seed is a crucial thing. As you can see, today I came with maize. And I did this so much on purpose because sometimes I, I think we, we talk and we repeat and sometimes we still don't quite understand. Today I came with maize direct from uh, from the shamba. And I'll, I'd like you to, to just... Take a minute with me and indulge me for a minute. I know it, it's a, it's, it's a, it might be out of your norm, but this is a seed. This is just a grain of maize that every one of us originates from this. And the word of God says it resonates with the seed of the mustard seed, that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. And Jesus uses a mustard seed to refer to the kingdom of heaven and also to refer to what? There is something else he refers to, to faith. Why does he go to the smallest seed that exists? Because he wants to show you that it's not in the size. It's not in the size. That just because a mustard seed is small, when it's planted, it, it becomes the biggest of trees. So don't undermine the size of that seed. This is just a single grain of maize. And this is all that you need as a farmer. This is all you need. When we talk of seed time, it shows you that for a seed, it has a time connotation attached to it. You don't go and plant any time as you desire. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the word, the word says that there is a time for every activity under the sun. And that means that there is a time to plant and there is a time to harvest. If you listen to what we've read, the word of God talks about seed time and it does not say harvest time. It only talks about seed time and harvest. That tells me that when it comes to seed, there is a time to it. So we are looking at this seed and we are asking ourselves, no matter how the size of this seed is in you, no matter how tiny you may see your destiny or purpose to be, that that is not the, 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 the fault. It's not a prophecy of how small your, your, your entire life shall unravel to be. That just because this seed is small, don't despise the days of humble beginnings. Now, as we go further to look at the seed, we say that every one of us is a farmer. Let's look at how we ourselves are farmers. In the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 3, it says a farmer went out to sow his seed. I'll not even go any much deeper. A farmer went out to sow his seed. And then we see that in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 6, this one I will read an IV version. Sow your seed in the morning and at evening let your hands not be idle, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. That is you as a farmer. We see that we are farmers. So what is the instruction to man? That you go out and sow your seed in the morning. Is it morning time? Is it evening time? You see, when it comes to sowing seeds, you always must be conscious of time because the only thing that stands between a seed becoming a harvest is time. If you put this seed in the ground at the wrong time, it shall never yield a harvest. So you must be conscious to understand that there is a time for everything under the sun. It is why I told you that after the many episodes that we have been talking about, that there is a purpose in you and that it's time for you to arise. Do not despair because of your age. Do not look at the numbers on your identity card. That was true. But once you have come to this revelation knowledge, I urge you, arise. Take that seed and put it in the ground. Let me give you an idea. In the book of John chapter 15, verse 1, our Lord Jesus Christ says something I love very much. I love this scripture because it talks about everything pertaining to my life. He says that I am the true vine and my father is the father, is the farmer. You are the branches. 
Jesus is a farmer. Our Lord Jesus Christ is a farmer. He came and he himself planted the very thing that we know that yields a harvest, the word. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the farmer. He came and he sowed the word that to, do, to this day, the apostles spread the good news and he left behind the same gospel that we hear today. But he himself, he's also a seed. He fell into the ground, was buried and rose again so that we could come to have eternal life. He sowed his own life so that none of us would have to go through death to eternity. Now, when we look at those who are born again, he is saying that you cannot be troubled like the people of the world. When you and I are looking at time as people who are born again, we look at time eternal. Our clock does not run out when we vacate of, out of this body. Our, our clock goes beyond this moment. So, Jesus Christ is the very Whenever you think of a seed, Jesus Christ must always come to your mind first because he was the ultimate seed. He was the son that was planted. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. His son came to die for you and me. He was given as an offering, as a seed. And as a result, we see him saying that this mustard seed that is, represents the kingdom of heaven, when it grew, it became so large. That is like a foretelling of what he did. That after he resurrected from the dead, his life brought to himself so many brothers and sisters who could now be called co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Because at the right time, Jesus died for you and me. He died and rose again. That you and I might first be redeemed by the forgiveness of our sins by having that debt being paid. And second, that we may have life life eternal. And then here on earth, we have what we call life in abundance. Jesus was the ultimate seed. Why do I want to go to the book of John chapter 15? Because I want you to understand that I'm not telling you to manipulate the results. You are a farmer. Whatever by now God has opened your eyes to understand is your purpose. It is, it is in seed form. But if you've been following, you remember we said that none of us know our entire purpose. All we know is that we have a purpose. Our Father who art in heaven knows our full purpose. But ours is to go the day by day. And we've talked about a lot about being righteous, about walking in holiness, about trusting in God, about being found at the right place, fighting this position, fighting disappointment, making sure we have all the mentors that we need. That was the foundation that we needed. And we later on go, went on to say that we are not just doing that, but we know that it's not by power, nor by might. Now, that being said, I need you to understand that when I'm telling you that in the morning go and sow seeds, in the evening go and sow seeds, I'm not telling you that you're in charge of the results, which is why we go to the book of John chapter 15 verse 1. Our father is the gardener. I will quote the apostle Paul when he says that I, Paul, sow the seed which is the word of God into your lives. But Apollos waters the seed. But only God is able to make that seed grow. None of us have the ability to make it grow. In the word of God, especially if you listen to that episode, it is quite a while back. I think it was aired towards the end of last year, 2023. We talked about that the seed is activated by water, any natural seed. The reason why we plant during after rains, unakutanga, the land is made ready for planting, but immediately when the rains fall, the farmers run to the shamba and they put the seed in the ground. The reason they do that is because a seed must be activated. As is, it is of no value to you. But it has to go into the ground. And when it goes into the ground, the water that is the, the moisture in the soil activates the seed for germination. So that principle, I talked about principles here. That there is nothing you can do about the principles. Even God himself operates by these principles. Your life must activate it. And we, retold, we talked about the activator being the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Holy Spirit is often seen as water. The water shall, the out of my belly shall flow springs of living waters. Quench my thirst, O oh Lord, with the living waters that I never thirst again. That is the Holy Spirit. So when you go out to plant, please remember 
that it is not your business how the seed grows. I love one of the stories Jesus Christ told that a farmer plants and then he goes home. He sleeps, he wakes up. Sometimes he even forgets he planted. Voila, someday comes, there is a harvest. That goes to show you it's none of your business how the seed grows. What is your business then? To know the power and the mystery of a seed. Go and plant that seed. The farmer is the one who nourishes it. He is the one who tends to it. He is the one who determines how big the harvest shall be. This maize was a result of just a single grain, a single grain. And you can imagine that single grain did not only yield to this one piece of one comb. No, it had three. In this one alone, and I took the liberty of counting, it has over 700 seeds just from a result of one. Just one gave birth to 700. Now you can imagine if now I go again and I plant this and I put it back in the soil, you can do the mathematics and see what would be the estimated result if you pay the wisdom that we have, we have been working on, if you apply it and you follow the seasons and the times and you know the right time to plant. When you arise and you actually plant it, you can only imagine what the results will be more than 700. This principle goes over and over again, despite the seasons we are in where people don't want to hear the word seed. But I will say it over and over again. So Jesus tells us that one of the reasons to guarantee you having a full harvest is you must always remember you are a farmer in a farmer in a farmer. Let me repeat. You are a farmer inside of a farmer inside of a farmer. I am a farmer who is in Christ Jesus, the farmer, who is in his father, the farmer. So the highest father, farmer is the father. The father lo sends his son to come and save you and me. Jesus saves us and now we are in him. Are you hearing me? We are in him. So as I go out to sow my seeds, is it kindness? Is it giving to the poor? Is it showing up to that class? as we've gone back to school to teach our pupils? Is it being the best teacher you can be? Is it being seated here in this moment in time and talking for the next few minutes to those people and sowing the word of God into your heart? That is me activating my seed. But once I speak, I do not know who shall watch this program. I do not know your name. I do not even know which nation you're watching from or what you're going through. You might watch this program on Tuesday or you might watch the repeat during noontime. There is a time for everything, but at the right time, you shall come across it as God is the one who determines when and how. But the truth is that I am here planting seed. I do not know when that seed shall bear fruits in your life, but I have the faith that because I am in Christ Jesus, that this is not in vain because no seed shall ever be planted and not yield a harvest. No, that is not the portion of they that are in Christ Jesus. The word of God tells us the minimum return for you and me is 30%. That is the minimum. And that is the seed that was sowed. We, we hear of this, the one that fell on good soil. You and I have been working on being good soil. So we do not bear anything less than 30%. And if you put diligence to it, you bring a hundred forth. I'm talking about a hundred times over. So when we are going out to plant, let us be aware that this seed should not be undermined. It, it might look to me and I might think to myself, what is 23 minutes that I should come here and speak to you? But to God, I never know how many souls shall be blessed by this program. So yourself, you might be sowing seed into your children and you might be thinking, I'm tired of being home. I've been home for the last five years of my life. I even forgot what it felt like to be among us adults. All I do is change diapers and run after babies and my sons can't stop hitting each other. My husband comes home looking good in a suit and he puts his feet on the table. I can't even remember the last time, except from Sunday, I'm always wearing pajamas and a t-shirt. You are sowing seed and do not, do not despise the days of humble beginnings. You are sowing seed and that seed is your children because they shall be the next presidents. The seed is crucial. So we've talked about many things, but let us go back and be farmers. Let us put the seed in the ground. Let us put the seed in the ground. And what is that? The word of God says, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. It is a mystery. 
that for there to be a harvest, this seed dies. Actually, even in the physical, when you put this seed in the ground, in Aoza, it, it rots. Germination comes from this seed giving out. It dies. It's only in its dying that there is resurrection. And that is what those who believe in other religions call reincarnation of some sort. It is a mystery of God. It regerminates. The mystery of the stars. Stars fall away after some time. But when they fall away, they disintegrate into the very dust we talked about. The seed of the stars is dust. So when they die, they become more cloud of dust. And out there, it becomes a very dusty atmosphere. But when God is trying to recreate the world, he already did it in the days of the beginning. It is already finished. He does not need to come to earth to give us maize. He gave us a seed. He does not come to, 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 to earth every time there needs to be a baby born. Inside of us, we carry the seeds of repro reproduction. So even in the universe itself, when there's a star that needs to be birthed, God does not come again. The technology he put in place is still working to this day. So those dust particles are still the one that will go through a very difficult process, which I'll not explain here because I'm not a scientist. And they also form another star. So we will see the same God uses the same dust particle to create the universe you and I know has no end. The greatest minds cannot even begin to understand the ends of the universe. No man has ever began to unravel the mystery that the mystery that is the universe that is the power of a seed it may look small it may look small and i encourage you today please most of you have been asking me i want to know my purpose because i know every time we talk about purpose we get excited every one of us puts their ear next to the to the tv and they want to hear give me five points to get my purpose we've been talking about purpose since last year because it's a complex thing and you must always not take for granted the daily taking of the cross. Remember, we always go back to dying to self. That means arise, plant your life in simplicity. You are the seed. Put yourself in the ground. When it means giving yourself sacrificially to serve in church, do so. When it means serving your children sacrificially to make sure that your children grow out to be members of a good society, do so. When it means that you shall forgive your partner in that marriage, so the marriage shall stand and he is obnoxious or she is rude and arrogant and the one that is talked about in the book of Proverbs that is so noisy that you'd rather live on the roof of, of, of your building than in the same house with her. And you say, I will still go home and I'll still get into that bed. Do so. You are the seed that God is calling for activation. And once you put yourself in the ground and you die to self, it is his business to activate you through the power of his Holy Spirit. And within time, you shall bring, you shall grow up to be like the mighty mustard, uh, master seed that brings forth a fig tree, a very big tree. And sooner than later, you begin to see that out of you, there shall be people giving testimonies because of your selfish, selflessness. Out of you, you shall begin to feed even your neighbors. You, out of you, you shall begin to visit the, the, the children's home that is near you. Out of you, church shall be blessed because you shall be the one that comes to Saturday to make sure the church is in order. Those are the things we are talking about purpose. I have always cautioned you, don't look at the culmination of purpose because most often that day will be at your deathbed. But what shall you do today? Every day is a time for you to put a seed in the ground. Every day is seed time. Know which seed you're supposed to put into the ground today. If it is a friend, call them and encourage them. If it is, it's a text, text somebody and uplift them. If it is apologizing, apologize to that somebody. Whatever it is, including sharing this program with a friend. Clicking the sharing button is a modern way of evangelizing. That is you doing the work of an evangelist. Do so. And I do know. For sure, for sure, the same God that talks about in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, that as sure as when rain comes down, that it brings forth a harvest and a seed, both seed and bread for the eater. He, he says, so is my word, that when I say that indeed I shall bring forth the harvest, you can rest assured that you shall be fruitful. Go out, be a planter today. In the morning, plant seed. In the evening, plant seed. Just look at the mystery of a seed. From a single grain, we have over 700 results. How about your life? You, you're not even a maize seed. You are beyond that. Be encouraged today. Arise and do something with your life. You are beyond yourself. You are more than where you are today. 
believe in God to help you and to guide you and you shall be marveled at how your life shall become. I know, I know in my Noah, for this is from the word of God. And as we always say, the word of God remains forever. Even the earth shall, shall be destroyed, but the word of God shall remain. Arise today and be blessed and shalom. Shalom.